Good morning, church family. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning with Church on the Rock. We're so glad you're here. We are so thankful for each one of you and hope you know how incredibly loved you are by God and this community of believers. We are so excited to announce that our National Serve Day will be coming on Saturday, July 15. So far, we have secured over 12 organizations to serve. We are letting you know now so you can plan to be a part of our biggest outreach of the year. I love what, what it says in Mark 10 and 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to ser serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. If Jesus came to serve, then we must. Serve Day provides churches across the world with the opportunity to serve their local communities and share the love of God through practical acts of kindness. Our hope is that serving others become our focus throughout the year. Simple acts of selfless love can open the hearts to Jesus. So join us by going to cotr.live and click on the link that says Serve Day. We can't wait to see you there. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Church on the Rock. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Hey, listen, earlier this week, St. Augustine High School informed us that they are actually ahead of schedule. They have completed all the renovations that were taking place in the auditorium, which caught us a little bit by surprise. And so quite honestly, it would have been our preference to just hang out in this gymnasium for the rest of the summer. However, that is not an option for a couple of reasons. Number one, the classrooms that we are currently occupying, St. Augustine High School needs to get into those to do some work this summer before school returns. And then also the gymnasium that we are in right now, these floors are going to become resurfaced also this summer before school returns. So everybody just take a second, look around, look around, enjoy it, because we will only be meeting in the gymnasium today and next Sunday, and then on July 16th, we will be back in the auditorium in our normal setup and our normal classrooms so that the high school can do the work that they need to do on this side of the building. So hey, just like the series that we've been in and the way that we've been talking, detours. Sometimes things don't go the way that you plan, and for us, this wasn't the plan even in the detour. So we're just gonna take another one and go back to the auditorium on July 16th. We'll see you there. Good morning, church family. My name is Cynthia, and I have the pleasure of serving on the staff here at Church on the Rock. Thank you for joining Church on the Rock this morning. You've seen the brief video before talking about Serve Day. I just want to reiterate that we're so excited about Serve Day, which is this Saturday, July the 15th. If you are not able to serve and you don't have the ability to come out and serve, we do have other projects that we would love to have your help in. We have where you could drop off dry goods and canned goods to the church on July the 15th. You could come and drop by and we will be donating those food, those goods to Epicure who feeds the community, those that are in need and less fortunate. We also have Hope for Handbags who we'll be, we will be help serving as well. And you can drop off used or either brand new uh, pocketbooks that you can have toiletries and all different types of things in. You could go on our website at cotr.live, click serve date and click on those links that says hope for handbags and Epicure drop off foods and you could get more details on how you can help serve. Also, I would like to let you know that today, life group leadership training will be taking place over at the kids campus in the kids toddler room at 11.45 a.m. If you've been through all access and, and you are a member at Church on the Rock, we would love to have you lead a life group here at Church on the Rock. Pray about it, see if it's in your heart to do, and then just join us at the kids campus at 11.45 a.m. Lastly, if you've been attending Church on the Rock and you feel led to know more about us, see if you would love to make this church your church home, we have all access starting today in the all access room following our service. So please join us if you would like to attend all access. Now, 
I will be getting into our detour series that we've been in for maybe over a month now. And I'm excited to share with you. I thank God for this opportunity. And I thank God for our lead pastor, Pastor Josh, giving me a chance to speak to you and share what God has laid on my heart. And hopefully it will be for you too as well. I will pause to take a brief minute of prayer so we can get started. God, I thank you for this opportunity, God. I thank you for those that are tuned in, God, and that you've uh, let join us this morning, God. I ask you to just bless what you've given me, God. Let your words be spoken, that they receive them. Open up the hearts, the minds, and the ears of those that are listening, Lord Jesus. Let your words come through, not mine, not my opinions, God, but yours. God, I ask you to bless what you've given me, God. Anoint it, God. Let it do what it's set out to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited to share with you this morning. Like I said before, we're in a sermon series called Detours. And if you know anything about Detours, sometimes you know they're coming. Sometimes they've been there for years, like working on bridges, working on roads. And you always be prepared to know either take another uh, road, another location, or either you just deal with it and go through the traffic. And maybe you might be in a backed up situation where you might be delayed for a while. I happened to look up the word detours to see what the dictionary said, and it said a long or roundabout route that is taken to avoid something or to visit somewhere along the way. And I thought about that. Sometimes that's how our life is. That's what our life involves, long roundabout routes that we deal with and we uh, go through in life. And sometimes uh, we uh, take them to avoid situations. Sometimes we have detours that come up that are planned and some we never knew they were coming. And I've even thought about sometimes we have detours that we are on and we don't even know we're on a detour. We don't even recognize it. So what I'm going to be talking about today is my topic in our detour series is called look alike, look alike. And the first thing that popped up in my head is when you're in a family and when you're born and you're a child and you're big, you've uh, growing up, you start to look alike, either your father or your mother. And sometimes it's both blended. But if you're anything like me, one, one of the things that I thought about when I was coming up, I didn't see myself in my mom or my father. And I was always lost to the fact to know, like, where did I come from? I used to think that I was adopted. I would tell my mama jokingly, did you adopt me? And she would be like, no, why would I adopt you and I have three other kids? I wouldn't want to add more to that. But I thought about it like, I just never seen where I fit in. Then God, uh, uh, my father ended up passing. And when my father passed, I met my side, that my father's side of the family who I've never met before. When I met them, I seen where I came from. I seen myself in them. And I was like, oh my God, I really do belong. I looked up the word lookalike. And lookalike says a person or a thing that looks like or closely resembles another. If you know, if you've been in the church anytime, you know where I'm going with this. Sometimes we look like people, even sometimes if somebody will see you and say, oh my God, you look like this star. I get, I'll get a lot of people tell me sometimes that I look like Jill Scott, if you know who that is. She's a beautiful woman, so it's such a great compliment. But sometimes people will tell you you look like different people growing up or that you have a doppelganger, someone that looks exactly like you. But what I love about God, when we become a Christian, we should look like him. We should resemble him. It's nobody else. I don't care what family you were born in, what situation you came out of, what issues you had went through in life, you should start to resemble Jesus Christ. And his word is a great place to go that we study, we learn, and it makes us more and more like him. It makes our character more and more like him. It makes our attitude more and more like him. It makes our walk more and more like him. So the person that I'm going to be talking about today is Saul, who uh, lately, uh, later came, became Apostle Paul. And he's a great person in the faith that everybody loves, everybody loves to talk about. I will be beginning to look at the uh, first part of Saul's life when he was called Saul of Taurus. Uh, he, to give you a little information about Saul, Paul, the Apostle Paul was from Taurus, and when we first encounter him, it's in the New Testament. He goes by the name Saul of Taurus. Paul initially opposed the followers of Jesus and passionately sought out to end the spread of the gospel. Saul was a young man who was well-educated, 
and on his way to becoming a rabbi, Saul was zealous and of Jewish faith. He is first mentioned in the New Testament as being present at the stoning of Stephen in the Bible, who was the first Christian martyr. Saul's name in Hebrew means prayed for, if you could believe that. It means prayed for. Paul meaning in uh, Hebrew, it means small, humble, and little. And when I seen that, I was like, I understand what that means because Saul was such a big guy, such a smart guy. He was doing God's will, he thought, in the beginning. He was prayed over. And then when he started going by Paul, he wanted to be so humble and he wanted to make himself little because he was under the authority of Jesus Christ. And he wanted that representation represented. Uh, I like uh, the, the Jews living in the Roman Empire. Paul had two names. So when I look back at this, I realize you hear so many messages throughout time that says Saul was doing his life. And when he met Jesus Christ, he, Jesus turned his name to Paul. But it's no scripture that backs that up in my research when I was doing it. It was saying that Jews Often living in the Roman Empire, Paul had two names. His Hebrew name was Saul. His Roman name was Paul. Paul lightly deferred to his Roman name in his letters because he primarily ministered to Roman, the Roman world, which included Gentiles and Jews. And Paul, Paul ended up being a big person in God, such a big a uh, person that we all look up to and what I love about him he was so humble Paul also Saul also at the time was he was uh, leading to be a rab rabbi a person a rabbi is a person that is qualified by academic studies of Hebrew Bible or a religious teacher so when we first meet him it's in Acts 7 57 through 60 Acts 7, 57 through 60 says, Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't change don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. Acts 8, 1 and 3 says, Saul was one of the witnesses, and he agreed completely with the killing of Stephen. Verse 3 says, but Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them in prison. When I read this, I was like, Saul was not to be played with. But the thing about it that I had to remember, you have to think about the time and the era that Paul, Saul lived in. Saul did not have the pleasures that we have of the new and the, uh, the old and the new testament. He completely had the old testament to go by. So Saul thought that he was doing the will of God. In Leviticus 24 and 16, it states, anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord must be stoned to death by the whole community of Israel. Any native born Israelite or foreigner among you who blasphemes the name of the Lord must be put to death. And I thought about that. If Saul was coming up in a time like that, where you think mo nobody knew that Jesus was who he said. Only Jesus and those that really believed and, and had a relationship and he opened up to them believed that. Saul thought it was just some guy because everybody wanted to predict how Jesus was going to come. They thought he was going to come as this mighty king on a white horse and like just taking over everything and freeing everybody. But Jesus came humbly to us in the lowest of lows. He wanted us to really know who he was, but Saul did not know. And a lot of people did not believe that Jesus was who he said he was. Saul was one of those into his Damascus role experience. So when I thought about that, you have to think about the mindset of Saul. He thought he was doing God's work. Have you ever been there? That you thought I'm on the right path. I'm doing what God told me to do. And you're far from his plan. I have. I've been there plenty times on my Christian walk. But I love about Saul to Paul when he changed, 
it was he had that experience with Jesus and he knew he would never be the same. And it's when you come into the real truth of God, the real truth of his word, you know that it's the truth and nothing else matters. We go here from Saul to Saul's conversion in Acts 9, and this is a lot of scripture, so just bear with me. Acts 9, 1 through 16. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers the way he would find there. And I just want to pause there. The Christians back in the day, they was called the way. We weren't called Christians. We were called the way because we simply followed Jesus' way. He was right there in flesh and blood and walked among us. And so we were called the way. We wasn't called Christians. We followed his patterns. We followed his footsteps. So we resembled him. We looked like him. We acted like him. And it picks up and says he wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heavenly heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul said. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Verse seven, the men and with Saul stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but they saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Dam Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now, there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Verse 11 says, the Lord said, go over straight street to straight street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man named from Taurus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the lead and priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. Verse 15 says, but the Lord said, go. For Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my namesake. I love that. It's so much in that that I could dig into. But I'm just going to say right now, God on our detours, God is always there. God always provide a out. Sometimes we place ourselves on detours by doing what we want, what we feel like, not consulting God, not asking him what we should do, but we do what we want. And God remains with us on those detours. But I love about God, he gave him a chance. And when, when uh, Saul got that chance and Saul was uh, seeing the light, his eyes opened, the scales fell off, Saul chose Jesus. And he realized what he was doing was wrong. And he got right up and did the right thing. We're going to continue in Acts 9, verse 20. It says, and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues, saying, he is indeed the son of God. We see here Paul was on a detour, but when he heard Jesus, he quickly got back on the right path. It's not too late. If you're listening to me, if you're looking at this video today, it's not too late to get back right on the right detour. Get back on the right path. You might have veered off. You might have went your own way. You might have ended up on a route that you didn't even know you were on the wrong path. But it's not too late to get back right on the right path. Sometimes we're on a detour and don't even know it. 
you ever been traveling or going out of town with your family? And I know this for a lot of men. It's always jokes made about men, how they, they don't want to ask for directions. They don't want to ask for, oh, can I ask you which way to turn or what? They want to just be big headed and say, you know, I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. But you ever been on a detour and didn't even know you were on the wrong path, just been traveling with your family, did not even remember, like, I didn't take this turn. I was supposed to take this turn and end up in a whole nother city. And you're like, how did I get here? Sometimes that's how life is. We are walking this walk, and, and sadly, sometimes we do it as Christians. We will be Christians saying we love Jesus Christ, just living the life day after day, but no relationship. No relationship with him. No change in us. We're just Christians by word. Not Christians by actions. Not Christians by heart change. Not Christians by our walk or our talk. But sometimes we are on detours that we don't even know we're on. What I love about God, he give us time after time after time, chance after chance after chance to get it right. So maybe that's you today that it feel like I've been just veering away. I've been veering off. I've, I took the wrong path. I took the wrong road listening to other people. Today is your day that you could get back on that right path. I have a couple of things that God laid on my heart that's how to, how to become his lookalike. I think it's so important that we don't try to look like the world. We don't try to look like our father, our mothers. But when you say you're a Christian, you try to look like Jesus Christ. And I think so many times when we're Christians, you hear this a lot of times that, oh, my walk, not like your walk. I understand that to some degree, but our walks should line up. Our walks should look alike. When we're following this book that's called the Bible, it's only instructions in that. And if we're all going by the same instructions, I'm going to end up looking like you sometime. I'm going to end up, I don't care what nationality, what culture, what, uh, what age, whatever you are, we should look like each other, our characters for sure. We should look like each other. We have to know to become more like his lookalike, we got to remember who created us, number one. We got to remember that. Who created us? Genesis 1, 26 through 27 says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our own image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scary along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. If we could remember who our creator is, Yes, our mom and dad got together and they had us, but God himself wove, wove us together in our mother's womb. We must remember he created us in his image. So we have to look like him. It's no way getting around from it. We have to look like him. That's why when you're an unbeliever and you're searching, 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 trying to find this thing that you're trying to fill your heart or you be like, I'm not complete. I'm not complete. You're not complete because you're missing the creator. You're not complete because you're missing the one that created you and wove you together. We have to remember our creator. He created us in his image. Number two, change your look. Second Corinthians 5 and 17 says, this means that anyone, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Don't let old things or old ways hold you back. I know sometimes it can be hard when you become a believer or a Christian and you like, I just did this last night. I just did this last week. I have these friends. I live this type of life. I have this type of job, whatever it may be. If you're a believer, all old things are passed away. Don't let those old things hold you up. Don't let those old habits hold you up. It might be some things that take time to let go, take times to let the to shake off, but God is right there with you. 
He would not let you fall. He would not let you fall. I'm a living example of old things have passed away. I do not let those old things hold me up because if I did, I would hide myself. I would hide my face everywhere I go because of the things that I've done in my past. But you got to know and believe in what 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says. I'm going to read it again for you. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. That's God's word. He's telling us that you have to believe that no matter what it looks like. Number three, change your walk. You must change your walk. First John two and six says, whoever says he lives in Christ, that is whoever says he has accepted him as God and savior ought as a moral obligation to walk and conduct himself just as he walked and conducted himself. Whoa. Yeah, that's heavy. People that we imitate in our life, we have to imitate Christ. It says, if you say that he's God and Savior, you ought as a moral obligation to walk and conduct, conduct yourself as he does. He is Jesus Christ. We must pattern our lives after him. We must pattern our walk after him. We must pattern our attitudes after him. Those days that you get up, of course we're going to have bad days. Of course we're going to have bad attitudes sometimes. But he's right there to God is right back on the right path. So we could become more like him, not just on Sundays when we come here and say, I love you and I love you and I'm so glad that you're here. But on Mondays when we have the Monday blues and we don't want to get up and we're aggravated with our kids or we're aggravated with our spouses, whatever your aggravation might be, your pets, your job, whatever that is, we got to remember to pattern our lives and ourselves after Jesus Christ. You know why? So we can be a light in the dark place. So we can be a light to people that don't know nothing about him. They can see something in us and be like, you look different. You know, I, I, not to pat myself on the back, but one, one thing about it, when I, got, when I became a Christian, one of the main things I said um, was I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to go around bragging and telling people, oh, I got saved. And you know how you want to put it on your shirt, put it on your forehead, put it on your car, put it everywhere. I was like, I'm not telling nobody. I want somebody to see it. And it was my oldest daughter. We were riding in a car one day and she told me, she was like, mom, what's going on? And I was like, what, what you mean? And she was like, something is different. And I was like, what you mean something different? She was like, something is different about you. Did you get saved? And I was like, what? Shocked the mess out of me because it was what I wanted. I prayed to God and I told him I wanted. I didn't want to tell nobody. I wanted somebody to recognize him in me. And she did that for me. She gave me that. And when, I, when she said that, I was like, yes, I'm a Christian. I haven't told nobody. I was waiting for somebody to see it in me. My, my, the person that's in my house, living with me day after day, walking with me day after day. And my oldest daughter, we grew up together, basically, because she's, she, I had her when I was 19. She seen something different in me. And that, mean the world, that meant the world to me. People are looking at you, whether you know it or not, especially those in our house especially those that we work with, especially those that we come to church with. They're looking at you. Let them see Jesus when they see you, not you, not the old you, not my nasty attitude that I have, not the bite biting and the gossiping and all of this stuff, but let them see Jesus when they see you. Maybe that's you and you're like, I don't know who I look like. I, I'm not a believer. I, I don't even know what you're really talking about, but it's interesting. Maybe you like, okay, I'm on a detour and I veered away off from what I know, what path I'm supposed to be on. Maybe that's you that you know, like, I didn't even know I, I, I lost the path. I didn't even know I went on the wrong path. I didn't know I took the wrong exit. If that's you and you're listening to this, God is giving you another chance. He's giving you another chance to get that right, to get back in right standing with him. God just want us to recognize that he's there. He never veered off from us. He never let, left us. We leave him. And so many times it might not even be a sin thing. Sometimes it's not a sin thing. Sometimes it's just a simple, your relationship has went somewhere else. You, you was lost. 
You just, you stop praying. You stop reading your Bible like you were supposed to. You stop being with like-minded believers. You stop serving. You stop being in life groups. You just stop doing everything that leads you back to God. Maybe that's you. And God is just saying, I'm here. I'm waiting. You want to look like me? Here's my word. It shows you everything about me. I, you need prayer time. Prayer time with him helps us get back into a good relationship with him. So we can put up requests, but also so that we can sit there and listen and hear what he is saying to us. It's so important that we look like our father, our heavenly father, not the father on earth, but our heavenly father, that we look like him. If that's you, we say this prayer at Church on the Rock. Every time anybody gets a chance to speak, one thing I love about it, we give you a chance to get back and right stand the way with God. Now, this is not the words that I'm saying. It's a hard thing that's going to take place. And I'm just going to say the words and you can repeat after me. So hopefully things change in your heart. When they change in your heart and you say it for real, remember that old life is no longer when you leave here today, you might be going back to stuff that you just left. Remember, it is all gone. Old things are passed away. You have a new life, a new life in Jesus. You have to believe it though. You have to believe it, no matter what it looks like. So if you say this prayer with me, dear Lord, I give you my life. All that I am is yours. Come into my heart, cleanse me, wash me, make me new. I love you, Jesus. I repent of all of my sins. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you prayed that simple prayer and you meant it from your heart, you're a new believer, a new creature. All old things are passed away. That's the great thing about God. Even if you did something five minutes ago, that thing is it's old and passed away. Now you might have to get some things right with somebody, ask for forgiveness from somebody that you might've hurt, hurt in the long run, but you're a new creature in God. That's what I love about him. And that's our heavenly father, the one that we're supposed to look like. So make sure you're looking like the person that you're supposed to look like. Thank you for joining us and I hope you tune in next week. Next week we will be back live in service and you will have uh, worship if you join us live and we will not be in studio again next week. We thank you and we love you and I'm gonna close us in prayer. God, I thank you for the day, God. I thank you for those that joined, Lord Jesus. I ask you to just touch the words that were spoken today. I ask you to just touch the scriptures that were spoken today, that it pierce the hearts of your people, that our ears are opened up, God, that our eyes are opened up, God, that we do your will, God, and that we not try to look like social media, look like those that are trending, God, look like our parents, God, but we try to look like you, Lord Jesus. Help us to look more and more like you. And God, help us to get in our word to know what we supposed to look like, what our character supposed to be like, what are our attitudes supposed to be like, how our walk's supposed to be, Lord Jesus. Help us to do your will, God, not ours, God, if, we're ve if we veered off the track and we went on an exit that we weren't supposed to go on or we detoured on purpose, God, help us to line back up with your word and your will for our life, God. We love you, God. We adore you, Lord Jesus, and we praise your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I love you, church family. Y'all have a great day.